Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity Top Down Shooter tutorial series. Now, in the last episode, we added a way for our enemy here to get hurt when we shoot him, but at the moment, we've no way of our player getting hurt. We're just kind of invincible as we run around this world, uh, blowing things up, basically. So, we're going to add a way for our player to get hurt, and for our player to show that he is being damaged. And one of the most simple ways to show that we're getting damaged is by manipulating the color that we're using for our player. Because we're using just a simple color, what we can do is just make him flash to a white color and then that will demonstrate that he's taken damage and we'll keep track of his damage um, behind the scenes. We could also of course put a UI display on but we're not going to deal with that just yet here. So to take some damage, obviously we need to start setting up some things for our player to actually take some damage from our enemy and for our enemy to have a way to give the damage. So first of all, we're going to make a couple of little changes. First thing we want to do is on our player itself, we want to give him the tag of player so that we can know that we can reference, make a reference to that in the script from our enemies when we're trying to hurt the player. One of the other things we want to do is change how our enemy is handling uh, touching against our player because at the moment if we play the game here we have the two arms of the enemy which go into the player and we have our player's gun which can spin around and push the enemy away a little bit which is kind of a bit weird um, there's not many times when you'd be wanting to shoot your gun and it would magically pass through the enemy like this or magically touch against the enemy it's kind of a bit strange looking and with the enemy's two arms there, there's a chance that one arm could hit against the player and then the other arm hit. And the damage would be caused by the two... We would get two moments, basically, of the damage being caused from the enemy. So we're going to do a couple of things just to fix them up first before we write any script. So on our player, our gun is hitting against our enemy. And there's two things we can do to change that. One of the first things is on our gun and the cube here, we can set it to be a trigger so that it will actually pass through the enemy. And one other thing we're going to do is, if I just zoom in here, we're going to move the gun down a little bit inside the player's body so that our bullets aren't just basically appearing inside the enemy here. So we'll just put it a little bit shorter, maybe over to the side just a little bit like that. And we should see now that when we play the game, our gun will just pass through the enemy's arms. We're not actually touching the enemy's arms now. And the gun is just a little bit that little bit further away. So that our bullets come out of the end of the gun. And they're not just... Uh, we're not having our gun bump into the enemy, basically. Uh, so the other thing, as I said, our enemy here has two arms. But what we're going to do... We're going to create a new empty object. Here. New game object that we'll call... We'll call this the heart zone and then we're going to add a box collider to that so i already had box start typing in but we're going to add a box collider and we can see we get the kind of greeny outline here i'm just going to hold alt and twist the view around so we can see it a bit better like that and we're going to resize this box we're going to make it a little bit thinner a lot smaller like that and we'll move it so we want to move it so it's at the end of the arms here so there's just, it's just kind of a little bit outside the arm so that once the enemy comes and touches the player well it'll actually be doing some damage that way so i'm just going to shrink it down uh shrink it this way a bit let's just see what kind of size that has we want it to be a tiny bit bigger than the arms and it doesn't really matter how long it is so we'll actually just leave that as it is there and one other thing we want to do with this is make sure that it is a trigger so we don't want it to be a solid box that the player can run into we just want to say we we'll just want to say basically when the player enters this zone then they're taking damage from the enemy okay now that we've set those few little bits and pieces up let's go and write a couple of scripts to actually uh, handle our health system for our player so we're going to create a new C sharp script that we'll call our player health manager and um, we'll create one more script uh, the other one has just been added so it's compiling in the bottom right there uh, so we'll add one other script that we're going to call our heart player script so we'll open both of these up in mono develop once they finish getting added in 
So there's our hard player, and we should get our player health. Nope, it doesn't want to open up just yet. There we go. Okay, so we have our player health script. So obviously for our health, we're going to need to have a starting health, so a public int starting health. We'll need to keep track of how much health our player currently has, so that'll be our current health. And then in our start function, as soon as the game starts, we want to set our current health to be equal to whatever our starting health is. And the next thing we want to do is add a function down here to make our player get hurt. So a public void, um, we'll just call it hurt player. And in this, in this function, we want to take in a value so we're going to add uh, int uh, damage amount here and then all we have to do is as we did with our enemy uh, health manager script if we jump back over here where we had taken some damage that way we'll just say our current health minus equals damage amount and that's very simple and straightforward and the other thing we'll do is in the update loop if our player if our current health is less than or equal to zero then we will deactivate our player. So with a game object that's set active, false. Perfect. So that's all we need to do with that for the moment. Uh, but obviously now we need to set it so that when a play, when a, the enemy runs into the player, we do some damage. So that's why we created our hard player script. We need to decide how much damage are we going to do to the player. So we'll create a public int damage to give and obviously this script can be reused for any kind of environmental objects or anything like that as well so if our player walks into a fire we can use the same script if we if our player walks into some spikes or anything like that we would use the exact same script for them but for our purposes it works perfectly for our enemy as well so we're not going to use the starter update loops at all all we're going to use is uh, public void on trigger enter and that's why we made our heart zone back here a trigger box so that when our player enters the zone we can activate this so when the player enters the trigger zone we check for what is the other collider that walked into the zone so that's our collider other and then what we want to do is say okay if the other object that walked into our zone if the game object of that uh, if the tag of that object is equal to our player tag which if we remember back on our player here we set the player tag to be that so if that's the case which it should be when we're walking into our player is it just to make sure that our enemies trying aren't trying to hurt uh, each other when they bump against each other at some other random point but if the other object is our player then we can say okay on that object on the other game object we want to get the components of our player health manager so get component player health manager and on that we want to call the hurt player script and the amount of damage we want to give is our damage to give variable that we created up here so that'll be damage to give like that and that's all we have to do in that little script so let's go back into our game and put all this into action so on our enemy once that finishes compiling down here, we should, we're going to add to the heart zone, we're going to add our script, our heart player script, and we're going to say we'll do one damage every time the yellow guy hits against the green guy. And then on our player itself, we're going to add the um, player, player health manager script. So our starting health, we set that to be 10. Oh, we have our current health uh, as a public variable. We should set that as a private variable because we don't want to make any changes to that because it's not going to matter as when the game starts, straight away it'll be our, um, it'll be set to be the starting value no matter what we put in there. But actually for our purposes for the moment, because we want to see how the health gets affected when our enemy walks into us, it's actually slightly helpful. So we can walk away, as you can see, 
the enemy immediately took a bit of damage off us. We walk again. The enemy is doing damage. So we can see the damage has been taken away down here. But of course, we don't have any feedback in the game up here at all. So what we want to do is add the ability to have our player kind of flash into a white color. So how can we do that? We can do it very straightforwardly and very simply by affecting the material that is attached to our player. So on our player, we have our mesh renderer here and our mesh renderer has uh, the player uh, element attached to it. So if we go into our materials, we have our player material here. And what we can see, we have it selected as a green color, but what we can do, we could flash it as a white color and then go back to our original green color uh, very quickly and that would demonstrate us taking some damage and it's very very simple to actually do that in a game because we we know that we have a material attached to our player so we can just access that material and set the colors that way so if we go back into our player help manager script now if we're going to make the player flash uh, a different color for a second we obviously need to know how long we're going to make that flash last so we're going to have a public uh, float called flash length and then we're also going to need uh, because it's a this is a, a timer that we're keeping track of we obviously need a private float and um, counter variable so we'll call this our flash counter and this will that will count down uh, every time that we do the flash we have the original variable obviously to be able to set our flash counter for its time to count down and if we're going to make our player flash a different color, we're obviously going to need a reference to the renderer itself, which is attached to the player. So we're going to have a private renderer that we'll just call rend. And then finally, if we're going to make the player flash to white and then back to his original color of green, we need to make sure that we store whatever the original color is so that we can go back to it after we flash white. So we're going to create a private color that we'll call our stored stored color. And just while we're here, I'm going to change our current health to be a private variable. Okay, so if we want to store our color, then we're going to need to, in the start function, we're going to need to get our color that our player starts off as so that we know what we can go back to. So here we can just say stored color. Oh, I didn't put a semicolon at the end there. So stored color is equal to, on our renderer, we want to get the material that is the color of our player. And then on that, we want to get color. And the color we want to get is typed as this. So we want to say underscore and then a capital C and then the rest of color. And that will get the color very value on the material. If we just go back into Unity here for a second, so that will get us this color here. We can do we can access different color variables. We can access the emission variable and some other different variables as well, the specular color and I think one other I can't remember off the top of my head right now. But we only need to concern ourselves with the normal color of our material. So now that we have gotten that color, we know we have it stored there. So when we have our player get hurt, the first thing we can do is make sure the flash starts happening so we'll say our flash counter is now equal to our flash length and the second thing we do is make our color go white and the way we can do that is just by saying rend which is our renderer the material on the renderer we want to set the color and the color that we want to set again is the underscore color variable and then we have to choose what color we want to set it to and very simply we can just say color color dot white like that and that's all we have to do with that and so just to see this in action before we uh, reset it going back to the original color we'll go back into the game and once it compiles and we play it as soon as the enemy touches against us we should turn white no, we didn't turn white for some reason. We have an error here. On line 34. 
Oh, because of course, in our start function up here, we haven't set our renderer to actually be anything. So our rend should be equal to get component renderer like that. That's the thing we we're missing. We have to actually assign to our renderer before we can make any changes to it at all. So we'll go back in here. And once it compiles, there we go. This time, as you can see, we turn a nice lovely shade of white. So we need to make that go back to green after our count uh, after our counter has gone down. So what we'll do is in our update section, we're just gonna say if our flash counter is greater than zero. Well, if it's greater than zero, then we know that our flashing must have started because our flash counter has been set to be the flash length. So if it's greater than zero, then what we need to do is make the counter count down. So flash counter minus equals time dot delta time. And then the next thing we need to do is check if our flash counter now goes below zero. So if flash counter is less than or equal to zero, then the next thing we want to do is say, okay, if our flash counter has now gone below zero, we need to go back to our original green color. And so we basically do the exact same thing as we did down here with changing the color to white. So I'm just gonna select that script. But this time in saying that we want the color to be color.white, we want to use our stored color that we set at the start of the game. So we'll save that now, go back in here, let it compile once more. And then we should see, so make sure that we have actually, we have to make sure that we set a value for our flash length, of course. So we set that to be 0.2, it should be just long enough for us to see it happen. And now if our enemy walks into us, we flash white for just a little bit to show, oh, we've taken some damage. We're taking repeated damage and eventually taking so much damage, we're destroyed. So there you go, that's how we, we can make our player um, be uh, show some feedback basically of how they're getting damaged and how we can actually take some damage in our own game. So thanks for watching this episode and I'll be back soon with some more top down shooter tutorial goodness.